Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and Al Ewing is back on Venom, issue number five. That probably makes it even more disappointing. Let's get talking about this comic and move on from there. Uh, first, Al Ewing is the writer on this issue. There is no Ram V in this one. Brian Hitch is the penciler, Andrew Curry on inks, Alex Sinclair doing the colors and VCs, Clayton Cowles doing the letters and production. Hitch and Sinclair do the cover. There's a variant cover out there stuff. So this is the issue where Al Ewing comes back, and we're supposed to get a whole bunch of answers. We don't get any, for the most part. I don't know what Kang was doing there. Maybe he was just a, another fake by uh, Meridius, and this Meridius seems to, be, seems to be the one who's pulling all the strings. I don't know, and at this point, I don't really care. Um, I really expected so much from Ewing returning, finding out what's going on. Instead, what we get is Meridius, who... I thought they were going to, you know, give us like some totally badass, awesome guy who's just like, he's this brainchild. He's this amazing freaking guy who just kicks ass. Look, I know that people loved Loki. They loved the idea that Kang was introduced. There are some people who are so desperate for any kind of content that they'll just be satisfied with anything. Hey, if you liked Kang in Loki, you're going to love this comic book because Meridius was that version of Kang, that black dude who was just, you know... Oh my god, oh, I'm gonna do these things, okay. Oh, oh, you can't hurt me because I got the time stream. And, oh, the time stream's over. Oh no. Uh, now I have no idea what's coming next. And now I'm in your hands. It's like, dude, you know, if there's anything I hate more than anything else, it's inconsistency in comics. All right, as far as a comic book is, is concerned, if there's consistency, I'm down with it. If you make things turn out to be a credible threat, I'm down with it. Maybe you know more than me in this regard. Did Al Ewing ask to do this comic book, or was he assigned to this comic book? Because he's writing this comic book as though he was assigned to it, and he's just paying the bills, you know, for his flat. That's what they say in England, right? <laughs> like, this is not written like a typical Al Ewing book where he's just, he's the granddad. He's just like, I'm doing everything here, baby. I'm kicking butt and I'm taking names. No, this is written like a guy who's just like d similar to me where it's like, okay. Um, what's his name? Donny Cates. He made this really incredible plot, this really incredible storyline, but he just failed in the application and the delivery of what should have been an amazing story. Every single one. I don't think there was a single person in the house who read those first 10 or so issues, maybe, of Venom when Donny Kate started and was just like, oh my God, this is amazing. I think all of us were on board. But as time went on, more and more of us just started to kind of slip off, started to realize this isn't what I thought it was going to be. This is just a lot of big high spots and nothing else, you know? Hmm. So it was a great, incredible concept with a really poorly executed delivery. That's just the way I look at it. And this seems to be something similar, minus the good plot. Meridius, like I said, seems too much like that Loki TV show, the Disney Plus series version of Kang. That's not the Kang I'm interested in. Kang showed up in not this issue, but in a previous issue, and I thought it was going to do something special. It didn't. There, there was just nothing good here. Meridius, Meridian, uh, Meridius, Meridian, whatever his name is in this, I think it's Meridius. He's, he's, he's an idiot. He's like, the person I hate the most is Eddie Brock. I hate his stupid face. Like He just sounds like a whining little biznatch. Do people say, still say biznatch? That was always fine. It was the funniest thing about Snoop Dogg to me back in the day. He's just whiny in this. He's just crying about, you know, I hate him, I hate him, I hate him. It's going to get worse. You can't have a master planner. Like, to me, I'm thinking to myself, Eddie Brock is the new king of black. He defeated the king in black. He's that badass. Now, what are they going to do to make somebody better? Okay. I started thinking to myself as this issue started, I see where Ewing's going to go with this. He hasn't found somebody who's more badass than him because it would be stupid to find somebody who's more powerful than him. It would be absolutely, to me, 
it would just be ridiculous to find somebody more powerful than the King in Black because we can't keep on raising the God level tier, you know? Like it's it's Dragon Ball freaking Z at this point, where it's like, okay, well, I'm gonna go after after you know what do you call it, a certain point is like a I got to Super Saiyan, awesome. I got to Super Saiyan level two. There's a level two? Oh, I didn't expect that. Oh, I did not expect that at all. Super Saiyan level three. Was it Super Saiyan level four that they got brown hair again, but it was still longer and the lightning then five and then 37 like i i don't know what they're doing at this point but it's like dude at some point you know what's gonna happen there's gonna be super saiyan level 9000 and then it's gonna go over 9000 <laughs> and then just imagine how big gogeta's neck is gonna be because remember how skinny his neck used to be when he first started in dragon ball and then his neck got like this and z and then pretty soon it's just really like you know no body just a big freaking neck okay I'm, I'm being silly at this point <laughs> no carrot can get stuck in my throat <laughs> what the hell man so i figured they're not gonna make somebody more powerful they're going to make somebody sneaky AF. They're going to make somebody who's just so sneaky and he's plotted because he's like, oh, I've thought about this for, for millennia. I've had all this time to think about this stuff. It's like, oh, yeah, that would work. He doesn't have to be stronger. He just has to be sneakier, more devious, more Loki-esque. No, he's more Loki Disney plus Kang. Because you can't have somebody who's all like, you know, I've been plotting and planning for a long time. <laughs> Starts twisting his mustache and it's just like, that guy's so stupid. I hate his face. Stupid, stupid face. What? So you haven't been planning. You've just been emoing. <laughs> Nobody's afraid of that. Nobody's afraid of that. It gets worse because now there are multiple kings in black. So let me get this straight. These guys must be from the future because the only king in black we've had for millennium because he's been captured by the, you know, in Clintnar and it's actually been like the kiln more than because it's just, you know, a prison. The king in black was the only king in black and then Eddie became the king in black. Now they seriously nerf that by saying, all these guys have been king in blacks. And they're all a bunch of weak, pathetic idiots. I, I feel like Chris Jericho could do this, this, this review better. Talking about those freaking uh, the symbiotes, the, king, the former king in blacks. It was really pathetic to me. I was so disappointed in how horribly bad this comic book was. It just doesn't make sense. It does not compute. I see Al Ewing's name on this. And it's worse than the previous three issues that Ram V has been writing. I didn't think that was possible. I literally opened up this comic book thinking it was going to be the savior of saviors. I mean, I came dressed in the part. You know what I mean? And this is the crap I get. <laughs> I I don't know what to say about this, man. Except what's been said. I, I think this is going to have to be my last issue of Venom. I'm dropping off of a freaking Al Ewing book because it's bad. Uh, yeah, this none of this stuff makes any kind of sense to me. This was the time to start making some sense of things. This was the time to show that Brock is actually powerful, that you're not going to just nerf this guy. Like, I didn't even get a reason. I really expected at some point, specifically in this issue, Meridius to reveal just how smart he is. Not some emoing little freaky, like, the guy might as well have blue hair and start screaming, You're canceled! Like, bish, what? <laughs> I really expected him at some point to reveal something that made me go, oh, and then him say, I've been doing this, I've been thinking about this for millennia, for several millennia. I couldn't defeat the former king in black, but Eddie Brock, right now, when he hasn't fully realized and grasped his power, and when I stress him out by messing with his son, and the original symbiote he'd, he'd bonded to and all that. Right now, he's at his weakest. I've seen his timeline. 
Right now is the perfect time to strike. Soon. Something along those lines. I just have to get all the pieces in play. I've already got several pieces in place. But now, right now, since now's the time, now's when I can move them in and finally destroy him. That would have been enough to make me say, Oh shit, I'm in! <laughs> I've been like, boy, go! But I didn't get that. I got a guy emoing. It's, it's stupid face. How about this stupid comic book? I am so disappointed. I will not be reviewing issue six. It's not going to happen. <laughs> This is terrible. I'm, I'm reading fewer and fewer comic books because of just how bad they've been lately. Like I said, I want heroes and I want good comic books, well-written. Even the art in this, for the most part, was good. I, I love me some Brian Hitch. There was one part where Brock was facing this way, but he turned his head in a way like, no, I, I'd have to be an owl to turn my head the way that he did. Y'all, look at the comic book again. See that, that image. I know he's got the whole symbiote thing going, and it's Meridius, you know what I'm saying? He, he's one of the King in Black. I don't know. And him even, like, there was the moment where I thought he was going to show how powerful he was when Bedlam showed He's just like, don't speak for me ever again. Like, that was him talking to a kid. That was a, a father talking to a kid, like a kid just did, a kid just ran out in traffic and you just grabbed him and pulled him back in. You just put your finger in his face and said, don't ever do that again. That's that moment. And every father has felt that moment at some point where it's like, I could bend and shape and break this kid. <laughs> I have to be really careful with how I do that. But running out in traffic is a very good reason to threaten and intimidate a kid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, done. I'll see you guys for another comic <laughs> one of these days until eventually all the good comics are gone <laughs> and we're, we're, we're getting closer to that narrow margin. Whatever, it is what it is. Um, bye. <laughs> like the video, watch an ad. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.